Thanks for joining us for this special edition of Political Times with me, Ian Silveira, and James Bloodworth. James, thanks very much for joining us today. So, of course, we've had Jeremy Corbyn. He's been elected as Labour leader. Massive democratic mandate, 59.5%. Just wonder what your thoughts on that specific area is. I don't think it was any, uh, any huge surprise that he was elected. Some of the, the Labour debates and events I've been going to in the last, last few weeks, Jeremy Corbyn, or the last few months even, Jeremy Corbyn has really been carrying the audience in the way that his, his Labour leadership rivals um, didn't. I was, I was really surprised in a way, though, at the, at the scale of the mandate. I mean, this wasn't just um, £3, people who've paid £3 to join, uh, to vote in the Labour leadership contest. This was, he received a huge mandate from, from long-time Labour members, if you like, as well. Um, I think it, we, it's, it represents a kind of sea change in, in the mood of the Labour Party um, after Ed Miliband lost the, the election in May. I think many of us thought, at the very least, there would be a hung parliament with Ed Miliband, um, the leader of a coalition with, with the SNP and perhaps some Liberal Democrats. I think the sense of disappointment uh, when that didn't occur um, has translated into this kind of emotional reaction which, is, uh, which has gone for, for the kind of ideological purity, if you like, of, of Jeremy Corbyn. And why do you think Labour members have gone for, as you call it, ideological purity? On the one hand, I think there's a sense that among Labour members that the party's going to lose the election in 2020 anyway. So after Ed Miliband, many pundits, uh, many in the Labour Party said, you know, Labour's going to be out of power for another, another 10 years. There are no obvious choices to, uh, for leaders, so 2020 is going to be a, a write-off for the party anyway. And so I think that that Labour members think, you know, if we're going to lose anyway, we may as well lose with, with a candidate we, you know, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly heartedly agree with. Um, I also think there's the left's been inspired by uh, the movements in, in Greece, for example, Syriza, Podemos in Spain, and they just feel like, you know, they don't have to compromise, go through some of the kind of compromises with, with the right of the, of the party and, and the electorate which characterise New Labour. And obviously he has been elected. As you say, it is looking for a rather left wing. We've had indications with this, with his shadow cabinet. In particular, John McDonald has been appointed a shadow chancellor. Obviously a key position, a top job, one that Ed Balls used to fill. What do you make of that appointment? On a personal level, I actually like John. I think he's a, he's a nice guy. I completely disagree with him about his comments, pre his previous comments about uh, the IRA, for example, and, and Sinn Féin. Um, but no, I think he's a, he's a decent guy. I think I'm not sure some of the ideas that have come from from Corbyn's economic team about around uh, people's QE, it's called, which is essentially printing money. I think that might have been effective um, when the cra when the economic crisis hit in 2008. But it tends to be something that that you could you would deploy um, during a recession, whereas we're not in a recession anymore. So I'm not sure um, of its value um, today. Um, I think. I think John McDonnell, I think we need some, some, fresh, some fresh ideas, to be honest. I don't know if he's the, he's the man to deliver those. But I mean, one of the reasons Jeremy Corbyn won this, this, this election was because he talked about what he calls grotesque inequality in our society. Um, and I think the reason the other candidates lost is they've they kind of forgotten how important that is to many, many activists and also many people in the country um, as a whole. So if, if, if John McDonnell starts to talk about some of those issues, um, starts to address kind of... Um, yeah, the, the, the vast remuneration some, some people receive in this country co when contrasted with um, some of the pitifully low, low wages people at the bottom of the, co the economy receive, then I think um, it might not go down as badly as, as some people think. And another interesting appointment has been Hilary Benn, the Foreign Secretary. I know you've been very critical over Corbyn's uh, comments and his sort of alliances that he's made, particularly the Friends comments that he made with regards to Hamas and Hezbollah. What do you make of him uh, keeping Hillary Benn as Shadow Foreign Secretary? It looks like he's made a concession to, to more moderate people within the Labour Party um, by appointing Hillary Benn Foreign Secretary. Um, I think it's not just Jeremy Corbyn's associations who, who people like myself have a problem with. It's also his, his view of the world, his world view, which sees you know, any movement which is opposed to the United States, he kind of gives it some, some you know, lukewarm, at least lukewarm support. So. You, we've heard him talk about blaming, blaming NATO for, for Russia's behaviour in, in Crimea. He supports the government in Venezuela. Um, and, and again, back to Hamas and Hezbollah and various you know, nasty, nasty people he's, um, he's so stood on platforms with and um, been on press TV as well, for example. Um, I think the appointment of Hillary, Hillary Benn, I hope, will be, will be a break from, from, from all of that. I'm not, 
I'm not, I'm not very hopeful. I mean, we're going to be having, um, David Cameron's likely to put a vote um, to the Commons on, on intervention in Syria soon. And I think Corbyn's made very clear already that, that um, the Labour Party is going to oppose that, which I think is a mistake. So, I mean, it's an olive, it's, it's a fragment of an olive branch, if you like, but um, I don't hold out, you know, great hope that it's, a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a very big sea change in, in the attitude of a Corbyn party to foreign policy. On that note, there will be any moderation across the board in areas. Like you mentioned, quantitative easing for people. Do you think that's likely to turn up further down the line? Or do you think he's going to sort of hone some of those policies and maybe drift towards the centre going forward? Well, I think he has to compromise to some extent because, I mean, only around 20 MPs in the Parliamentary Labour Party actually wanted Jeremy Corbyn to win the leadership and this is you know out of over more than 200 um, MPs in total so he has to he has to have a party within a Labour Party within Parliament that he can actually work with but then the danger then of him trying to compromise with the PLP is that he then he, he puts himself up forward for accusations of being you know a sellout um, among some of his his left-wing supporters so he's in a he's in a very difficult place and finally of course you run a website called left foot forward and I just wanted to get your thoughts on particular left wing of politics and what this means maybe for the Greens and SNP. So to start off with in Scotland, a lot of people said the SNP won in Scotland because Labour weren't left wing enough, despite electing Ed who took the party leftward. So do you think Corbyn will make any gains north of the border? I think Corbyn could you know, conceivably win back some old Labour supporters in Scotland, but I don't think it's go you're going to see this big groundswell of opinion moving from the S SNP to, to Labour. The SNP, I mean, they aren't, they aren't really that left wing. It's, um, they're ver they've been very pragmatic in government. Um, they're also very competent and professional. So I'm not sure that, uh, whereas I'm not sure Jeremy Corbyn is. So I don't think, um, you know, for Labour's part, I hope they can make some gains in Scotland, but I don't think Corbyn's going to be a panacea in that respect. And um, secondly, the Greens, we've obviously seen Natalie Bennett. She had a bit of a rough performance, general election, but they were able to improve. Still only got one MP. How will Jeremy Corbyn affect that party, do you think? He's gone very much into some of their territory on issues like nationalisation. I'm sure we'll hear more from, from John McDonnell um, on various wealth taxes, similar to things they've they've mooted already. Um, as long as they, but as long as they keep their distinctive kind of environmental agenda, I think they'll they'll remain a kind of small force in in British politics. Fantastic. Thanks so much Thank for you. your time, James.